Okay. Are we ready for the next talk? Can start? Okay. Thank you. Cheers, you guys. Sorry? <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm Stefan February. Um, this is me. I'll be talking about Spring Boot configuration. Uh, I will not be covering any parts of actual Cloud Foundry, um, running Cloud Foundry deployment tonight, unless Tapping agrees to come and play with me and show me how it's really done. Um, otherwise, I'll embarrass myself. Um, what I will do is I will talk a little bit about um, Spring Boot configuration. We'll do a bit of a code. Um, I'll do a bit of live coding to show you how to actually get it going. Um, it's quite easy to actually uh, build the application yourself um, just from some, some, some basics. Um, my technical blog, which hasn't been updated in almost a year now, is hashbangbin. Um, uh, yeah, that's me. So, Spring Boot configuration. So, now everybody now, okay, so first of all, apologies. I, I did a bit of a bait and switch. I threw the word microservices into the description on the meetup group because um, we all like the buzzwords. Um, so, the microservices. I'm gonna, so, just to satisfy those of you who came here to hear talk about microservices, 12-factor applications. So, we all know about the 12-factor applications if you haven't already. 12factor.net lays out some really nice uh, 12 points, uh, almost like a modern uh, manifesto for how we would like to deploy and manage applications for scalability, maintainability, and all the rest of these things. Um, the third point of the 12 factors is actually configuration. Um, anybody who's ever deployed or had to maintain or manage an application in deployment knows that configuration is a bit of a nightmare um, and is actually usually the thing that trips you up and that, that gives you all sorts of um, um, nightmares um, when, when you're trying to manage an application. So the 12 factors uh, actually state that we should store our configuration in an environment. What they really mean is Let's externalize our configuration, let the configuration not be kept inside. Now Spring already provides for externalized configurations. Um, it is uh, the Spring framework that is. Um, it is not that difficult to actually externalize your configurations. It's been around for a while. But externalized configuration does have some issues. Um, it means that once you've actually um, uh, changed your configuration, you typically have to restart your server. There's typically no live reloading of or reapplying of your configurations. Um, there is no audit trail, in other words, um, unless you are actively, unless a part of your application, the config folder or the resources folder where your application lives, is managed in a separate GitHub repository, um, you kind of stuff because you won't actually have a log or a change log as it were, to know what have I done or who has done this change in the config server or on the configuration of my application, right, that, that information is gone. Um, typically, the, it's decentralized because the application, because the applications all have their configuration managed locally, even if it's externalized, that tends to be decentralized. The that's why we have things like Puppet and Chef to try and push out these configurations and, and manage them from a central location. Um, uh, but um, decentralized configuration, even when you're externalizing, is a bit of a, a bit of a problem. And then, of course, there's the problem with encryption when your when your configurations are at rest. Even if it's externalized, um, it, it could be a bit of a problem if you're if you're st if you're storing, for example, um, clear text passwords in those configuration files. So this is some of the problems. We'll, we'll we'll get to some of the solutions later on. Did you want to ask a question? Okay. Right. Um, you just did the old. <laughs> um, all right. So why why do we want Spring Boot configuration? Uh, well, we've got the runtime logging, right? Say so for example, if, if you want to at runtime change your login level and actually see your application respond. So Dapeng actually messed with the server and they crashed it. Um, one way that uh, that could be debugged with um, live, if you if he was able to, for example, say for this particular instance running there right now, the one that, that keeps booting, or even for all of them, just up the logging level to debug just for the <laughs> next while while I try to figure out what the heck is going on and then you do a CF log to tell and see basically what is going wrong, that would be massively helpful. No application restart needed, you just basically say, up the logging level from within the application for these packages, you know, the way that we can do it with, with Log4j, right? You say, I only want um, Spring Framework uh, Boot. I only want that part of the logging for those packages to be up to debug because I know somewhere in there it's crashing, right? That's, that's very helpful. 
Um, and then of course feature toggles. You know, if you want, to have a, if you have a feature flag somewhere that's in configuration, you want to turn things on and off and see what happens um, as, after you've deployed. Uh, and of course, we would like to protect our passwords at risk. Uh, Spring Boot configuration allows for us to encrypt our things um, and actually manage those those uh, cryptographic keys um, in a really nice manner. Okay, so configuration flow. I hope this is actually the, the diagram is clear. I'm going to try and explain what happens. There is a one, there's a two, and there's a three. Um, there's a GitHub repository in the mix here. Over here is where the developer typically would be sitting. Um, the Spring Boot config server is the one on the top right hand side there. And then at the bottom here are three instances of your application, right? Um, or even three different applications, it depends on you. The way you do this is um, you push your changes to the GitHub repository. By now it should be obvious that at least one way of managing your externalized configurations with Spring Boot config server is to um, externalize them in a GitHub repo. So let's say you have a GitHub repo where you now decide, okay, this is my application configuration repo. Uh, I'm going to clone this repo locally and I'm going to make some changes to my application. I'm going to push this file to the, up to the, to the repo. Once the file is in the repo, the config server will actually take the change um, uh, via, via webhook and actually pull it in. It'll pull in the change and apply the change and keep the change within its own state internally. Now the config server knows about that change. The config server is now ready to redistribute that change to everybody. But it doesn't just push it, right? They have to ask for it. So um, you now have to go to the application and there's a way using actuator that you actually just say, okay, pull the configuration change for this guy. Or you can say refresh the configuration for this server and that will actually trigger a pull on the config server and all of the configurations um, uh, will be pulled down um, and then applied uh, into your local state um, of, your, of your application. All right, that's enough talk. Um, now we're going to demo and, and, and do some stuff with, with keyboards. How are we doing for time? Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now, um, I actually need to write two applications. I need to write the config server and I need to write the client um, instance, the what you saw at the bottom there. App A, B and C. I'm going to be doing App A. If you want to scale it out, Tapeng has to come and help us. Um, but for now, we'll be writing um, the config server and App A. It's not going to be uh, particularly long because it's Spring Boot. Um, we are going to win. All right. First thing we want to do, I've already gone to, if you're not familiar with um, run, run.pivotal.io, not run, start. Start Spring.io, right? Spring.io initializer, you can generate sort of a skeleton, basic skeleton for your application uh, from here. You can choose whether you want it to be a Maven or a Gradle project choose the version of Spring Boot you'd like to use, and then you can sort of add in all of the Spring Boot packages um, that, you, that you would like to have added uh, for in, into your starter. I basically came here and the only thing that I changed was I changed my, my group and the name of the artifact. Um, and what it ended up with is basically um, this uh, config demo.zip file that we have here. So I'm going to unzip config demo, and this um, config demo is exactly the same thing right now. I'm going to split it into two applications, create two subfolders, import it into my IDE, and then we're going to go from there. Just give me a second. I just need to um, double check and confirm that I'm recording the screen. Yes, I am recording the screen. Mike. <laughs> All right. Let's unpack this file. All right. I've got it in the config demo folder. I need a client and a server. So I'm going to move, um, move the config demo folder to config client. I'm going to unzip it again. Um, and I'm going to move this copy to config demo, config, move config demo to config server. Right, now, now I have two instances of my application. First thing I'm going to do quickly, um, I just want to show you guys where I am. I'm in this uh, folder, you can see it the, the, in the command line here, I'm in uh, idea projects uh, config dash talk. Um, and there's an app config folder here. For the, in the interest of time, this is actually uh, link to my, sorry, this is my um, remote git repo. Uh, it's a publicly configured repository at the moment. We'll come later to how you secure um, access to your, to your git repository. But for now, it's a publicly accessible repo, which means that even you guys can pull my application configs. Um, although, of course, you won't be able to, to, um, to um, um, push, push things into it. But at any rate, um, let's have a look. 
start with, um, oh, I didn't show you what was in that folder. I've already got a whole bunch of things in here. We'll create a new uh, configuration file, a bunch of YAML files here, which is uh, some externalized configurations. Um, we'll create something new. Um, let me quickly go to GitHub. Right. Uh, this is the app config uh, repository that I'm talking about. I'm going to import these applications into my IDE. So I'm going to um, create new projects. Ah, I'm going to import. Let me import an existing source base. Um, config client, config talk, config client. Import it as a Maven project. Yes, search recursively, do what you need to do automatically. Um, since I'm, I need to actually, uh, we don't want any Ruby. Since I am actually, which one am I doing first? Did I say the server or the client? Is the client? Okay. All right. Uh, I'm also going to do the server, so I'll open two at the same time one from existing sources, and this time we'll do the server. Okay, recursively, import automatically, remove Ruby, all right. I'm gonna do a quick bit of heis housekeeping um, before we actually get started. One of the first things is, I'm going to change the artifact ID for the server to actually um, be config server. I'm going to go into the client. I'm going to change the artifact ID for the client uh, to be config client. Um, I'm going to do the same for the name. Um, okay. Um, let's start with the server. In order for something to be a config server, it needs to have this funky annotation called enable config server. Then you're a config server. Where does that um, live? Okay, we need, the, we need the Spring Cloud bits. So in my Maven project, I'm going to um, uh, Oric Spring Framework um, Cloud, right? Um, this is Spring Cloud Server. Which one? Cloud Config Server. Okay. Sure, we can do a, a release um, as well. We can specify the, the version of the, the server that we want. Anything else that I need here for now? Let's say no. The only other thing I need, because this is a um, um, this is a, this application has automatically been generated for me, a a skeleton application has been created. I'm going to enable config server, add the enable config server annotation to the uh, Spring Boot application entry point. Uh, let me get this out of the way. All right. And then I'm going to head to the command line immediately and fire it up. So config server. Uh, because, and in, in case you haven't, uh, because I'm pretty much done with that. Um, let's do Maven Spring Boot run. I'm going to run this here instead of in the IDE so that we can see the entire log of what's actually happening. Let me open the new tab, um, go to the first one, and we are booting. And we failed. What did I forget? Ah, of course. I did not set up a repository. Okay. So, other thing that I dislike is um, properties files. I like YAML files. So let's create a application dot, um, dot yaml, All right? And I can never remember, the reason why I have my notebook here is because I can never remember the spring cloud config, cloud config server, um, cloud config server git, is the git config? Git URI, yes, is the git URI that we want. Come on. Um, boom. There we go. So I know that my Git repository lives at Stefan Feb, um, and this particular one is appconfig.git. Right? So let's try and start this guy up again. Mm. 
All right, seems happy. Okay, that's the server done. Now our server is basically going to start pulling um, configuration uh, information off the off the off the off the of my um, of the server of the GitHub repo. Um, <coughs> A bunch of the endpoints that have automatically been created for me that I can already see here. Um, I can, for example, go and look in. So one of the one of the nice things that you get um, out of the server, it started on local host 8080 automatically. One of the nice things is if I go to config client. Come on. Something interesting is going to happen. Now, the reason you're seeing this is because if I go to my GitHub repository, uh, let me go to the GitHub repository. When you go to the GitHub repository, there is actually a file here called config client. Now, I don't know how many, how many of you have worked with Spring Boot before, but Spring Boot has this opinionated way of picking up its configuration files. So when you have a configuration file in the resources folder locally, the way that those configuration files are actually identified um, is through this a little algorithm that it applies where it first looks to see whether or not it's a YAML or a properties file. YAML files have precedence over properties files. Then it looks to see whether or not um, you, you, have some, you have the uh, spring.application.name environment variable set anywhere. Um, if it isn't set, then it will look for, for the, from the artifact ID, basically, what your application name is. It will infer that. That will be the name of your Spring application. Um, it will look for application.yaml is the default one it will look for. Any configuration in there will be, will, will be applied. The next one is whatever that environment variable for the name of your application is. It will, sorry, I'm going to turn off your phone, yeah? Um, whatever the environment variable is, uh, it's going to give, say if my, 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 my server is called config server, um, config server.yaml, that's going to be uh, the one that takes next uh, level of precedence. If my config server, if I've configured spring profiles for development, testing, etc., um, if I add a spring, if config server dash something else in there, so for example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give one here now, okay? This is just by way of showing that I can actually have another configuration file in here, something like if this file was called config-server.yaml, um, that could, if the, if the application was called config server, that YAML file would be picked up. Um, if I had uh, two different profiles um, that I would like to, that I've configured, uh, say for example, a, um, actually YAML files uh, work in, in, the, in, in such an interesting manner that I can have both uh, profiles active in separate uh, uh, documents um, inside the YAML file, right? A document is, is denoted by, by, by the dashes, uh, spring uh, profile, active profile there, spring profile here, set the environment to the profile that I want and I will get it. For now, let's just say that my application YAML is being picked up and it's actually pointing at where my, um, my, 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 Git, my Git repository is. Now because of these rules about how to infer the file name of the config that I want, um, since I've enabled my application to actually go and reach out to a Git repository to pick up um, uh, configuration information, it's read the entire Git repository. It's picked up everything in there. It's picked up the client config dash demo YAML, client config. Now, the, the reason why this is interesting, the, the names that every, every one of the names that it's picked up, is because if you recall from the slide that I showed you before, which was this one, um, was it that one? No, it wasn't that one. No, ah, yes, it was this one. So if you recall from, from, from this slide, right, the actual, the way that things actually work is that the client, um, who is the guy, who is app a, a, a BFC, is actually the, 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 the guy who wants the, the information, is the guy that wants the configuration changes. And he will have to ask the config server. But he's going to have to ask the config server for something. Now, because we were Spring Boot and there is some level of opinionatedness built into the framework, the default uh, naming conventions that apply to your local configuration in your client application will automatically be applied on the config server. So if my application is called app, if I have a, config, a configuration called app-a.yaml and my application is called app-a, that file on the config server 
uh, is basically going to get pulled. And where is the config server going to get it? Config server is going to go and get it in my Git, in my Git uh, repo, right? So back to, to, to the code. Right, next thing I'm going to do, I'm immediately going to jump in and build out my, um, my, my client, my client application, right? Let's do that. Change to the client application. What do I want to do? Right, first thing. This application, before I start running it, I need a few things. Um, this needs to be a RESTful application. Uh, I also want actuators so that I can do a, a nice, interesting actuator. It's going to give me a bunch of extra stuff. So I'm going to first make it a um, Oryx Spring Framework. Hmm. Okay, let me pull in the cloud stuff. Uh, spring, uh, the client config. Um, so I need to have the client configuration. It needs to know, okay, uh, I'm a client, I'm, a, I'm basically a config client. I need to go and look somewhere for my um, configurations. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for Spring Framework um, uh, uh, REST controller stuff so that I can basically uh, make myself a um, get ask Spring Boot to make me a, a Spring, I'm going to Spring Data REST. Uh, so start a data REST, right? And I want actuator. So actuator is going to give me all the nice little endpoints, um, auto automatic endpoints for my application. So or Spring Framework um, boot, and I like it when the IDE is always so helpful. Um, it gives you all of these these nice things where you can just look it up without having to worry about where it's actually coming from. First things first, let me let me go and create a controller that actually, um, okay, so I'm going to create a new package, create a controller, create a controller um, folder package there, I'm going to create my um, greeting controller, um, and this is just going to be somebody who's going to basically say hello. Um, this guy is going to be a REST controller so that it knows about how to return certain types of thing. Um, I'm going to give it a request mapping so that it knows um, how to handle um, hello. Um, I'm going to return a string and say hello. And I'm going to return hello. Dot, dot, dot. Right. And that's it. I'm going to start it up and cross my fingers. Um, that's not something to do. Idea project. Let's config talk. Um, config. So, uh, this is the client. Uh, let's get Maven Spring Boot to run. Make sure I'm not missing out anything that I want to touch on. Ah, crash. I love crashes. Tell you what you've done wrong. You have something running on the same port. Uh, what did I do? Ah, running on the same port. Oh, okay. All right. Um, that's an easy fix. So, by default, the, the config server actually starts up on the on port um, uh, 8888, like four eights. So, I'm just going to force it back to, um, sorry, it's a, uh, to run on port 8888 for the config server and keep my client where it is. Um, and the, re the reason the config server runs on that port is completely just some developer at Spring decided that by default the server will run there and also that by default any locally run config config clients on the same machine will go look for local host on that same on that same port um, i'll show you guys a, a neat little trick in a second about how to figure out how what the opinions of spring boot is because this is actually something that i found incredibly useful um, let me rerun this guy okay confirm this guy is now running on on port 8888. Okay, started running. Can you guys see this? 
Should I make it larger? All right, start up this guy. Okay, up and running. Now, the first thing that I want to do is, I would actually like for my client to go and look for a configuration um, um, on the on the on the server. So how do I tell my client? You know, you really should go and um, find um, any any uh, environment variables. Now we all know. Are we familiar? Is everybody familiar with uh, with the value annotation? The value annotation in um, in in Spring um, is really nice because it allows you to grab properties from um, or, or variables environment variables from properties file or from the environment so if there is a variable environment called um, greeting it will go it will go out will grab that and it will apply that uh, the way that it normally does this is by going to look for um, uh, sorry uh, I will need to make this change in the application YAML hang on I don't have a YAML file here that's something I haven't done yet. Sorry. So let me let me create an application.yaml for the client and and quickly make sure that the client actually um, is is more or less um, configured for for what it needs. So my client is ready to say hello. I've got this variable bound. Sorry, I need I need a, a private string here. Um, I'm just going to call it greeting, and instead of returning hello, I'm going to return the greeting. Now, this guy needs to be told that um, there is actually a, um, a, a, a an environment variable somewhere, right? So this environment variable greeting doesn't exist right now. Now, usually what you would do is, uh, is this. You would say, okay, in my YAML file, or in the environment, uh, either via properties like minus D greeting uh, would be something. So I'll just now make um, greeting hello everyone. Which, oh the thing that I didn't show you probably was, I didn't actually visit my local host um, to show that the hello endpoint uh, was working before. So this is still the old hello for that the controller was returning. Um, I'm going, just going to shut shut down the client and run it again. I don't have JRebel. If anybody has $500 to give me so I can buy JRebel, so I can have auto reload, uh, you know where to find me. Um, there is actually an auto an auto restart uh, feature inside Spring Boot as well, which I haven't turned on. Okay, so now it's reloaded. It's picking up hello everyone, but we don't want this guy to pick up hello everyone we want this guy to go and look for the look at the config server and pick up something from the config server um, and in order to do that we need a um, uh, an annotation to basically tell this guy okay um, a lot of the stuff that you're looking at here should be um, should be uh, obtained from the from the config server um, and that annotation which I like as mentioned um, is enable configuration properties. The moment that I've enabled configuration properties for um, for for this class, it will actually go and look up um, configuration properties from somewhere um, and try to apply them to my to my greeting. The other thing I'm going to do now is immediately. There's one more thing which I've forgotten to do. The binding between this application's name in the greater scheme of things at the moment is wrong. This application's name is not what it needs to be. Um, I'm going to give this application a name, but for the, in, for, the, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to give it the name that corresponds to one of, that, uh, one of those YAML files that already exists on the, on the, it already exists over here, right? So I've got this config-client YAML. So I'm just going to give it that name. We'll come back later if we have time and we'll, we'll play around with it and give and create some other uh, files and other file names um, on that on that repository. So in my YAML file, um, alongside the greeting, um, actually, 
yeah, okay. There is also another file called bootstrap.yaml, which takes higher precedence than your application YAML, which is interest, which is of course where bootstrap things that should run before everything else runs gets picked up. But for now, let's say that application um, dot name, we want the spring application name um, to be config dash client, right? This should actually allow us to, to go and pick up um, the, the greeting from from um, elsewhere, right? Let's hope this works. Actually, it shouldn't work because I know for a fact there is no greeting configuration in that file. In the, um, what I mean in that file, I mean in the, uh, in the config server. In fact, I hope it doesn't crash because it can't find the config variable. There we go. Can't find the configuration variable. Now, this problem that I'm having here is because um, there is an intermediary step which I'm going to skip over. I'm going to skip over directly to the advanced version of the talk, which is <laughs> that I'm going to create, I'm actually going to bind the, actually I don't want this package here. What I'm going to do is, I want to bind my configurations to a bean. For me, that's just going to be easier, right? Uh, we, we like that. We want our, our configurations to be to be picked up from a, from a bean. So let me call it config settings. Create a bean called config settings, and in this bean, uh, I'm going to create a, um, a string called, um, shall we call it greeting, rather imaginatively. I'm going to make this uh, into a proper bean with getters and setters. Um, why does it keep giving me files that aren't properly indented? Um, okay, first thing, I'm going to add the annotation for making this a configuration uh, properties uh, file. Uh, the configuration properties, I'm going to give it a, uh, just ignore, ignore this annotation processor thing up here. The configuration properties, this um, configuration properties file actually has this thing called the prefix, which I'm going to leave off right now, so I'm going to make it pick up things from the default scope. Um, the other thing that I need to do is I need to go and tell my, my, my REST controller um, that um, it actually needs to pick up that um, um, the, the, the configuration properties um, from from the from my configuration properties config settings file. So I want in to enable configuration for config settings class. I'm going to have to import this class. Why isn't it picking up my class? Did I misspell my class name? I'm in the client class config settings in config. Hmm. Okay. I'll get back to that in a second. Let me auto wire in the config settings class. What did I do wrong in this config settings file that my that nobody wants to, to have anything to do with it? It's just a regular Java class. Am I going mental? Oh, I know, it's the flippin' package name, isn't it? Nope, the package name is correct. io.pivotal.config public class config settings region controller. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rename it in case something in the IDE is really uh, messing with me. Um,
and my ID is locked up now. Brilliant. Okay. I've had this problem before. It really just needs you to wait for it. Here we go. And we're back. Let me rename this guy. This is the weirdest thing. Import the rest controller. Import my values. Yeah, this is it's weird, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going crazy. I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not losing. Losing my mind. Enable um, auto configuration for this guy. I want to. So this this annotation for enabling um, um, auto configuration. Um, yeah, that it knows it now. This this um, um, auto configuration will will uh, allow allow me to bind the where am I now? I'm in the greeting controller, but I don't want this guy anymore. I want to auto wire auto wire in my um, my config setting, right? Um, and create a local config setting and. Then I will return config setting dot um, get greeting. Um, in this way, since config setting will be auto uh, um, um, will be automatically um, enable auto configuration um, from uh, the prefix. Its configuration properties from the prefix. Um, I think I've mixed them around. I always get them wrong. Nope, enable auto configuration does not actually have that. Enable configuration properties for this guy, which should let him um, allow him to um, automatically be pulled in. The if we auto wired in the config setting. Um, this will basically um, auto enable configuration of the um, of the config setting. Create a bean for it. Um, the bean will be bound to all our properties, um, and that should hopefully just run. Build failure. Sorry? What did I miss? Yeah, this say enable out config 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 setting is not it's bigger than yeah. config setting down. Enable out configuration. Yeah? Config setting. It's not? It's complaining something. What was it? Yeah. You cannot find it. Yeah, it's Yeah, I don't think it it, 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 it. I think I've got the wrong the wrong annotation here. Um,
yeah, I had the wrong annotation. That means that this guy is it's the other one, which needs to be the auto configuration client. Okay, so, ah, really? No configuration properties for IO controller annotation found on no configuration properties. Ah, it's no, sorry. I <laughs> it's it should be the configurations uh, properties. This is the annotation. It's a configuration properties annotation. Uh, with the prefix is typically default and um, so the reason why there's a prefix uh, um, here is because when you have a configuration file that has a config property like spring.application.something, dot something uh, typically in your YAML file you would have uh, something like the application YAML um, spring application name and then here you'd have something else um, and then another thing Everything on the same level here is basically what will be configured by the um, by the config setting here and automatically bound to this guy. So um, I'm going to because I've been failing <laughs> failure mode. Um, I've been failing for a few seconds there. I'm going to say my prefix is failure mode. I'm going to go back to now. This is going to fail. Um, I'm going to run this again. Um, it should stay up this time, hopefully. Right, stays up. Um, the thing that I want to show is that when I go, when I what I expect when I see when I go to my to this uh, hello endpoint is an empty string. Uh, it's empty because there is actually not a configuration anywhere. Um, in my application that corresponds to the value that would map onto failure mode dot greeting and because that actually would it would be what gets bound to my config setting here the config setting would would be, uh, be would the bean for that would be instantiated by this annotation the enable configuration properties and the auto wiring would then take care of uh, tying that bean into my controller so how do I fix that? The fix for that is basically that I need to go into, let me blow this up a bit. I need to go into my, um, into my uh, GitHub repository, modify the appropriate uh, configuration here. I'm going to edit this one. And the reason I'm going to edit this one is because of the, because the fact that I've chosen the name for my uh, for this client application to be config client so the file name corresponds to that um, I've cheated a little bit so I'm going to I've already created one before here I'm going to create a new one now which should correspond if we recall correctly to uh, failure mode so failure mode um, greeting Hello, CF peeps. Right, this this configuration now needs to um, needs to be pushed to to, to, to GitHub. Um, Git uh, blah 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 blah. While that is pushing, um, the server which is running here um, should pick up the new configuration change. The, the uh, git push has succeeded. Um, the server at some point will get a notification that, that something on, over there has changed. Um, this is the client application which is running here. 
Um, I'm going to issue a refresh on the client server by doing a curl um, minus x localhost um, onto the client at the endpoint is actually because of actuator the endpoint is refresh localhost okay um, method not allowed why is it not allowed of course it's allowed didn't I tie up my actuator to the application Spring. What do you do refresh? You have to have your refresh scope enabled on the variable. You are right. But that is not my problem at the moment though. Uh, yes, you are correct. I need refresh scope on the um, uh, annotation here. But also I've forgotten to add something obvious into my into my um, config, uh, my, YAML, my YAML here. I've got Spring Boot Starter. I've got the config client. Got data rest. I've got actuator. No, I didn't. I don't see anything obvious. Okay, I'm going to cheat. Easiest way to cheat is to look at your previous example, um, which is Never mind. Are there any questions so far? Let me let me ask that. People have been awfully quiet until now. Any questions so far? So where did exactly the config client is pointing to the server, right? The config server? Yeah. So where is the exact configuration? So that is the, 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 the place where it actually um, it's it infers that. So it will right now, it's actually um, looking on localhost. Um, at the specific place, and that is an inferred, um, uh, an inferred setting. Uh, remember, before I said that, in order for us to actually, if you wanted to figure out exactly where all these things are pointing to, what you can look at are um, places like these in the configuration. Um, there is this uh, very specific uh, <coughs> Spring framework import for uh, Spring Boot Cloud called Auto Configure. This uh, import here, and if we look for the cloud configuration, we'll see cloud auto configuration, uh, which will point to um, uh, other other uh, parts of the application like cloud scan configuration. Um, that is interesting. It thinks that some of these files are missing. Some of these dependencies, it's missing them. Okay, how are we doing for time, by the way? Yeah, you're a bit over, so probably more five ten years. Okay, so if I'm a bit over, I'm I'm going to to jump ahead. I'm going to pull up my working <coughs> my working application um, and just quickly run you through the actual working of um, um, this is the config let me shut down these guys I will go into the config client and I'm really interested to see what exactly in my in my YAML file it was that just bit me because I can't for the life of me think of anything I've got the config client dependency I've got actuator I've got data rest I've got uh, starter web. Everything is in there. I don't know what's going on with my computer right now. 
Um, at any rate, so if I run my server, so my server is working, I am just going to start up the server um, again and run my, my known working client. Um, which also happens to point at exactly the same um, place for the um, configuration file, except that it is reading in a different location on the um, YAML file. Maybe we don't want that one. We want hello. Right? So this hello CF meetup is right now from being served from the um, from my client, the working client, which is um, for some reason unbeknownst to me, working, uh, where the other one was broken. So this client right now is working, no problems here. It's picking up the actual configuration from um, from the the GitHub repo, and where it is picking it up from. If I go to my GitHub repo on GitHub directly. And I look at my um, the client config YAML, which is where that running application is actually picking up this change. Um, if I edit this file directly, which you really should never do, um, but for the interest in the interest of brevity, hello direct edit. Um, let's go home already. Um, and then I'm going to commit these changes. And when I now tell my application to refresh itself, um, method not allowed. Yeah, it's supposed to be a post. Anyway. Why on earth is it not? This is this is really bothering me now that the refresh is not 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 working. So yeah, Sorry. Ah, yes, of course. Thank you. I need to say exactly what it is that I'm doing. So that was that. That is actually what was wrong, was that the method wasn't allowed because I, I was using curl incorrectly. Thanks, thanks, Mike. Um, so the funky cloud greeting has been pulled from the um, from the, the configuration. Uh, what has actually happened here is the um, config uh, server, or rather the client, has basically said. Um, the only configuration that has changed is this funky cloud greeting. I've done a diff against my local changes. This is what changed. If I now go to my to my endpoint here, um, then there is this 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 guy here that says, um, "Hello, let's go home already." Um, there is one more thing which I will quickly point out. Inside, and I just want to talk about the fact that we talked about wh why it's so great that we can have encryption. You'll notice that there is actually this encrypted string inside my <coughs> inside my 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 um, application YAML inside my config client YAML file that is automatically decrypted for me if I it won't be now <laughs> it won't be automatically decrypted now because I'm running I haven't configured my my client keys yet so I'll go to to start up the server, which knows how to decrypt the keys, and this is just to give you an indication of something that you would like or might like to do uh, for further reading. Um, we'll do Spring Boot Run. And once that local version, which is running on 8.8.8.8, if I look for the config client's um, uh, configuration, it will come back to me. It will go to the, to the GitHub repo and come back. And it dumps the entire um, raw 
or parsed um, GitHub client config. Um, and instead, that encrypted string, which was on the server, um, is now being decrypted, right? And it, um, yeah. So the way that works is basically you have to configure a cryptographic key with a simple um, secret um, that you specify uh, in your application YAML. Um, and, and that is, is really it. So if I go to source uh, main resources here, um, I show you what my uh, bootstrap.yaml looks like. There is just this, encrypt key, and that's it. Um, once, I've, once I've specified a cryptographic key, um, I'm then able to, to um, use the, the encrypt uh, tool for with, that comes with a Spring command line tool, or I can run on the, I can directly encrypt uh, uh, elements on, there is something, okay, last thing. I can basically use my config server as a cryptographic endpoint. So I can actually um, encrypt things directly against my config server because one of the things that the config server makes available for me is if you see during startup, um, there is a slash encrypt endpoint. There's also a slash decrypt endpoint. So I can do a curl. I can post to, to um, encrypt or in, since I'm sending data now, I can just no need to do X post. I can just say send the data for Stefan. Um, Still want that? Really? Ah, wrong server. Again, thanks, curl. <laughs> Sorry, my foo is completely not strong today. So it's encrypted that for me, right? And I can pass the string back into it and ask it to decrypt it. Um, and in the same way that it's able to encrypt and decrypt for me, um, it can do this over a, so you can imagine, right? I've now got cryptographic services for uh, anything that I that I want to pass in. Right now, the, the it's decrypted at the Stefan down here. Right now, it is actually uh, an open server, but it could just as well have been um, um, uh, secured with Spring um, with Spring security. Um, I could have set up either um, a security, uh, rather symmetric key-based authentication using um, OAuth, or I could have done something like a basic auth and secured my keys using uh, uh, configuration, externalized configuration, where the key is stored, and then have my client, my server, securely communicate. Um, yeah, the, that's the, the gist of my talk, and I, I'm going to bring it to a close now because I think um, I'm, I'm well over time at this point. Uh, if there are any questions, please ask them now before we go. I've got one, two, three more books uh, left to give out. Any questions? None. Okay. That's the end of the talk then. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming.